Hello everyone, I'm Paul. Welcome to RC Phone Fighters. Um, we pretty much just released the plans for this Phone Fighter 117 version 2. And today we're going to be getting into doing a build video for this new plane. So let's get started. Um, one of the first things before you um, even print the plans, um, just take note, there's a page in there that has a note about printing them. Make sure you actually print them to actual size because sometimes um, your Acrobat might have it defaulted to fit the page or something else. So just make sure you print all the plans to actual size so it actually comes out to the correct scale. Alright, now we got that quick note out of the way, um, let's just take a quick look at some of the stuff that's included. Um, basically the plan sets that we're making now, they do come with the tiled version and the non-tiled version of the plans in uh, basically one PDF. That means you can print the plans to any um, 8.5 by 11 size um, printer or if you want to there's pages at the back of the set where you can um, take it to a copy house and they'll print it to large 30 by 42 inch um, pieces of paper so you don't have to do any cutting. Here's a real quick view of one of the uh, large 30 by 42 sheets um, like I said are included in the back of the plan set so if you do have access to a large scale printer you can print them all out and um, it'll print on two sheets of 30 by 42 paper. The first couple of pages of the plan set do include um, some quick graphics to kind of show you some details of the plane of what it'll look like when it'll be built uh, some generalized notes giving you kind of general placements of parts and some uh, notes about the uh, uh, usual equipment you can use to build a plane also up in the first couple pages you have details on how to build the motor mount with um, templates to cut out uh, the motor mount out of wood and also I made some decals that you can print either to paper or you can find um, some like uh, sticky back stickers or sticker labels you can print them to and just cut them out and stick them on the plane I'll show those later in the build and show you what that looks like. All right, the basic materials needed to build this new uh, FF117 version 2. Um, basically, you're going to need three sheets of foam board. You can use the regular Dollar Tree foam board, um, but I uh, decided to use the already uh, black foam board so I don't have to paint it. And what's neat about the Elmer's uh, black foam board is the actual foam core is also black. So if you do have, you know, like cut edges or whatever, it won't look white and look a little odd. Um, one other thing. You're going to need, if you're going to be doing the optional wing tip uh, vertical stabilizers and the small uh, vortex generator on top of the plane, um, just get one piece of 3 30 seconds thick uh, basswood or basewood, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll cover that later in the build too. Alright, since I'm going to be cutting this out by hand, um, I've got basic tools that I'm going to be using. Uh, I've got a standard utility knife. Uh, make sure you have a lot of nice and sharp blades and I have a regular X-Acto knife for doing the fine detail cuts. Um, one thing you guys might want to invest in if you're doing a lot of foam board builds, um, there's some pretty cool like 45 degree bevel cutter um, tools. Um, this one here I got for about $14 off of Amazon. Um, to me it's worth its weight in gold, it saves a lot of time when you're doing the bevel cuts. And on this FF117 V2 there's a lot of double 45 degree bevel cuts in the main fuselage part so this really saves time and it makes it a lot easier for me. I will put a link uh, for this tool in the uh, video notes and also it'll be on our blog site uh, so if you're interested in finding something like that. Um, also you're going to need a hot glue gun. Um, you can use a small one or a big one, whatever works best for you. I'm going to be using some uh, six minute epoxy. That part I'm going to be using to glue the KF airfoil parts down to the main wing. Um, also we're going to be using um, some straight edges. All right, after you got all the uh, plans taped down to the foam board, just make sure you go through and review all the notes about um, the cut lines and all that stuff. And, you know, the slots and just make a good note of what's all on there before you start cutting out the parts. There is a uh, little legend for the line types also, um, for like bevel cuts, uh, the center line of the bevel cut, notches, and some of the dash lines that are just kind of note lines that depict where the KF airfoils will um, glue down to and stuff like that. All right, the first thing I usually do is I just do some real rough cuts to get the parts separated on the foam board. And then go back, if any of the uh, edges are real loose, you might need to just put a little bit of tape to help hold it down nice and flat while you're cutting. Um, after you get the parts separated, then you can start cutting out the individual parts. And a good place to start, I think, is um, cut out the main wing portion. So I'm gonna do the back side first of the main wing, then I'll cut out the uh, front side. When cutting out the back side of the main wing, usually what I'll do is I'll cut out all the notches first and the prop slot, and then I'll go around the edges and cut out the actual shape of the back side of the main wing. All right, I got the back of the main wing pretty much cut out. Um, I got the prop slot and all the little uh, tab slots cut out. 
Um, basically, I'll just have to pull the plant out and then dig out all the holes um, for the slots. Usually, I only cut through the top layer and then dig out the foam and then leave the paper on the bottom side of the tab slots. Um, one other thing I do, um, some people for the elevons, you like to cut them all the way out and then um, you know use tape hinges or whatever. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this paper now and I'm going to flip um, the foam board over and I'm going to put it on the back side and I'm only going to cut through um, one layer of the paper and then I'm going to do a double 45 degree bevel on there and it'll pivot on there then you can usually go over the back side and put some tape on it. So let me uh, do that and then I'll cut those out and show you what it looks like. Oh and one other note there is a bevel line cut on the leading edge of the wing. Um, that will be cut on the bottom side of the wing and we're going to do um, a rounded edge kind of with the sanding block and I'll show you that um, in a little bit. All right, everyone, I got the uh, double 45 degree bevel cuts on the elevons. So now it'll freely move up and down. Um, and on the other side, I did already clean out all the slots and remove the foam. So it's ready to go. All right, now I'm gonna cut out the uh, front portion of the main wing and all these other little uh, parts that are pretty much self-explanatory like the tail fins and this other bulkhead up there. Um, we'll go into more detail when we get to the front of the fuselage. I'll get back to that. All right, now we have the front of the main wing all cut out. All the notches are cut in it. So it's ready to glue together with the back piece of the main wing. Um, basically, I usually just take a piece of tape on the bottom side, run it across to kind of hold it together. Then I'll just take some hot glue and run a bead of hot glue down the middle of it. And then it should be uh, glued together pretty good. All right, I got the front and back pieces of the main wing now glued together um, with the hot glue. Uh, don't worry too much if it's not super rigid because we're going to be gluing on the KF airfoil pieces and the fuselage, that'll pretty much make it a lot more rigid um, once it's all put together. Uh, but now what you're going to do is you're going to get a straight edge and we're going to set it off roughly about 3 16ths of an inch off of the edge. And I'm going to cut um, basically just through the top layer of paper and I'm going to peel the paper off. Then we're going to take a sanding block and kind of make a nice rounded bevel edge along the leading edge of the wing on both sides. All right, guys, here's an example of the uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch um, cutting of the top layer of the foam board. Um, I'm peeling it back to expose the foam, and I'm going to come back after I get all the paper peeled off on that little edge. I'm just going to round it off with a sounding block all the way around the edges and kind of do my best to give a nice, even, and uh, contoured, um, rounded bevel cut along the edges. All right, everyone, we're pretty much finished with the main wing for now. We're just going to push that to the side. And now we're going to start working on the forward part of the fuselage. Um, pretty much, this one's pretty straightforward. Um, you do have some uh, double 45 degree bevel cuts in here. So you got to take some time and cut those out nice and uh, carefully after you get it all initially cut out. And there is some notes here. Um, this portion with the black line, you want to make sure you cut all the way through. Um, that'll let it hinge and uh, fold a little bit better if you don't cut it it'll put a little bit of extra stress on the paper because it's not a straight fold there there is an angle so you got to cut that and then let it have a little bit of play and then it'll fold over nice all right everyone i got the front fuselage piece all cut out and all the 45 degree bevel cuts uh pretty much all throughout this front folding piece all through here all these lines and you also want to do a 45 degree bevel cut pretty much along the edges all the way around this piece. That'll help make it fit more flushly to the main wing. And also when the top piece comes in, it'll fit nice and flush too. So uh, let's do a test fit onto the main wing and see how it looks. All right, everyone, this is just a quick test fit of the front fuselage on the main wing. Looks like everything's lining up pretty good. Um, we'll come back and we'll hot glue where we cut the sides of the fuselage. And we'll also glue this flap kind of at an angle so it, when we do the final main gluing of it into the wing wing it'll be held in the right position so that looks good we'll push it to the side and we'll start cutting out the other pieces all right everyone i pretty much cut out all the uh, pretty straightforward easy pieces to cut out um, the two vertical stabilizers those are just all straight cuts uh, bulkhead one is all straight cuts uh, bulkhead two straight cuts um, the battery box has some double 45 degree bevel cuts because this will fold up later and uh, glue into the back of the plane and then we'll have a wooden motor mount that mounts in there. Um, the nose piece is pretty straightforward. Um, it's got 45 degree bevel cut all the way around then a double 45 degree up the middle. Um, the thrust plate um, has 
uh, double 45 degree bevel cuts here on the edges and also down the middle um, and basically the vertical stabilizers mount into that. We'll cover that a little later when we mount it to the plane. Here's a quick look at the two KF airfoil pieces. Um, these will be glued to the top of the main wing. Um, you want to create a bevel cut along the leading edge on the top. Um, basically like we did on the bottom of the wing. I just cut pretty much 3 sixteenths of an inch um, of the top layer of paper and I peeled that off and now I'm going to take a sanding block and just kind of round that edge so we have a nice rounded edge on the leading edge of the wing. Now we're going to get started on the very last piece. This is pretty much the most complicated piece of this airplane. This is the upper and rear fuselage um, that gets a lot of double 45 degree bevel cuts. So kind of take a look at this in a, a close look up before I start cutting it because pretty much all of these dash lines in here these are going to be double bevel cuts to make all the folds for the cool fuselage for this airplane so I'm going to start cutting it out and I'll show you what it looks like um, one note um, usually I don't cut out the hatch um, that's going to be made out of this top piece until after you get it formed and kind of glued on the plane to make sure it's in the right place and in the right alright guys I finished cutting all the bevel cuts on this upper fuselage um, piece this one is probably the most detailed and hardest one to do because there is tons of double 45 degree bevel cuts all throughout these fold lines. Um, after you get those cut make sure you go through and kind of fold at each um, crease point here that should put a nice crease kind of on the outside of the fuselage and make it look a little bit better. Um, also make sure you go all around the outer edges of this piece so it'll fit more flushly onto the main wing piece. Um, that'll make it look nicer and you won't have the gap underneath it. And on the front, these tabs that are going to be folding over, uh, make sure you put a nice shallow bevel on these. These are a little bit longer than the typical 45 degree bevel cut because um, the way they meet up with the fuselage on the top, it needs that more shallow bevel to line up more flushly. Um, after you get that all cut, uh, basically we're going to start getting into the hot gluing. And the first part that I'm going to do is we're going to hot glue this bulkhead uh, piece one. Basically it lines up with just a little bit behind where these two points where these uh, triangle I guess pieces kind of meet right there so that's going to be hot glued into here then we're going to fold up the top of the fuselage to meet up with this bulkhead and that'll help keep the shape and make it a little more stronger all right everyone we have bulkhead one hot glued into the uh, rear portion of the fuselage and this uh, helps hold it in the right shape after you get that glued in what you want to do is kind of come along these edges here where these two pieces will meet up and run some hot glue down there and that'll help glue it together and hold that shape and do that on both sides and basically I don't want to do the same thing with the rear pieces back here all right everyone I've got the rear and top fuselage basically all kind of glued on these edges that were apart and I'm just doing a quick test fit to see how everything lines up um, double check your uh, KF airfoil pieces you know see how they line up with the wing edge you may need to you know do a little trimming in here to make sure it lines up correctly on this leading edge you know especially if you're doing everything by hand cutting you know it might be a little tiny bit off so you might just need to do some trim ups um, before you glue everything down because um, basically what you're, you're going to be gluing down the KF airfoil pieces before you glue down this upper and rear fuselage portion because um, we're going to be putting in the servos and stuff into these KF airfoil pieces and running the wire underneath so um, just double check everything before you get it start gluing it down and see how it all fits and you should be good to go to the next step all right after we do the uh, test fit i'm just going to come back in and uh, glue bulkhead two in on the hatch basically just line it up to where it meets up on the edges of the outer portion of this uh, upper fuselage part so you just hot glue that in there basically that's just there to help hold the uh, form of that once we cut it out and turn it into a hatch to open up on the top. All right, now we're gonna move on to start gluing in some pieces. I've already glued on the front fuselage piece. So now I'm gonna glue on the uh, front nose. Basically, you're just gonna run a bead of hot glue around the whole edges of it. Then it's gonna fold and basically just glue on the front and then be right down there as the nose. All right, everyone, I now have the nose hot glued on to the front of the fuselage. So I'm gonna be moving on to the next step, which is, um, using some epoxy to glue on the KF airfoil pieces to the main wing. Um, I use epoxy because it goes on a lot thinner 
and it works nice for sealing it to the main wing. All right, everyone, I got the KF airfoils nice and secure to the plane with the epoxy. So I'm going to be moving on to the next step. I'm going to start putting in the electronics on the plane. So first up, I'm going to start making the motor mount. Um, in the first couple pages of the uh, plan set, there's some templates to make the motor mount. So I'm just going to cut those out of this 3 seconds thick uh, basswood or basewood, whatever you want to call it. Then we'll glue it together basically in the fashion that's shown in the plans. And we'll insert some uh, 440 uh, nut certs into the back of it. And then you'll be able to uh, bolt the motor on um, and get it ready for the plane. All right, guys, got the motor mount all cut out. Um, I got the two plates for the main part of the motor mount epoxy together. I put the 440 nut certs in. Um, you can usually get the 440 nut certs in uh, little packs like this from your local hobby shop or online. Um, basically now I'm just going to epoxy the whole thing together. Usually I just put a piece of tape underneath it. I'll mix some epoxy up and then just layer it all through the areas where it's going to glue. Then you can just flip it up and let it adhere and dry. And then uh, once it's all glued together, we can install it on the plane. All right, the motor mount is now hot glued into the motor mount box. Uh, I already have the motor attached, so that part's done. Now I'm going to be moving over to installing the servos. Um, the servos, I'm going to mount basically on the wings like this. What I'm going to do is just trace a line around the servos and I'm going to cut out through the KF airfoil layer and set it down inside the uh, foam board and then basically I'm just going to cut a straight line um, I don't know about a half inch off the edge of this and then we can embed the servo wires into the KF airfoil so you can't really see them and those will be run into the fuselage area. All right, everyone, I got the servos hot glued in. Um, they're embedded into the KF airfoil, and I also cut a slot and just ran the wires down it, and then we'll have to match it up to where the top of the fuselage comes down. We'll just cut a little hole so the servo wires can go through um, easily, um, and that part should be done. All right, everyone, I pretty much have all the electronics in. Um, I added the control horns for the control surfaces, and the motor was already mounted. It's all wired in. I added a Turnigy 60 amp ESC, uh, a little bit bigger than what's recommended on the plans, but that's the only one I had lying around. Pretty much just hot glued it down, and then I used some scrap foam board to brace it. It's in the air duct, so it will get some air cooling, hopefully. Then my receiver's on the other side, again, just hot glued down, and I put another piece of scrap foam board to brace it. Um, so it's uh, ready to glue the top on. And one note, just make sure you run all your wires again right down the center, so it'll go through that little... Uh, uh, cut away in that bulkhead too, so it'll and then it'll nicely fit right there. So, all right, guys, we've got the top of the fuselage all glued down to the airplane. So now I'm going to be working on the thrust plate. Basically, what you want to do is do a test fit and run some beads of hot glue in all the uh, double 45 degree bevel cuts. Then place it in here first. You know, and then hold it down in the right shape. And let the glue dry. And especially these side pieces so they go straight down because those are you're later going to glue in here and then basically we're going to take the vertical stabilizers we'll glue them in place and then glue the whole thing down all right everyone i got the thrust plate and vertical stabilizers all hot glued in the, to the plane now so they're nice and secure so i'm moving on i'm going to be cutting in the hatch on the top of the plane all right guys got the hatch all cut out now this is kind of what it looks like as you can see the uh, bulkhead number two piece is helps hold it in shape it's got the hatch all done um, basically what I did is I put actually a little piece of a uh, craft stick or popsicle stick up front basically that's gonna hook up under this front little tab here and I also put a little craft stick popsicle stick thing hanging out the top that's just so you can pull it off easier and then I mounted some magnets at the back of the hatch there's a magnet then on the inside of the hatch on the plane there's a magnet there that'll hold the can or the lid on the hatch and basically i put um ends of the craft sticks here too that'll help support it and make sure it's even with the top uh, and it looks a little better so pretty much it just slides in like this locks in place with the magnet all right now we got the hatch done i'm going to move on to putting on some of the decals um, basically what i do as I print them on to these um, kind of sticker label sheets that I get, you can get them either on uh, Amazon.com or at Walmart. Um, the ones I use are 8165 by Avery. These are 8.5 by 11 um, stickers. So basically you can just print it out, um, cut out the decals and stick them on. 
All right, everyone, I cut out the decals and applied them to the plane. Um, it's starting to take shape, and I think it looks pretty good now. All right, everyone, now we're going to get into some of the uh, optional parts. Um, you don't have to put this on the plane, um, but I like to put them on there. I think it helps it fly a little bit better. Um, basically, it's two small vertical stabilizers that will go on the end of the wingtips, and also a small vortex generator that will fit on top of the uh, fuselage up here. Um, basically, you cut these out of um, basswood, 332 um, thickness. So I've already got them cut out. I'm going to color them basically with just some Sharpie pens, make them black to match the plane. All right, I have the uh, vortex generator installed on the top of the fuselage. Um, basically, in theory, this is to help keep the air uh, moving down towards the vertical stabilizers at the back of the plane. Um, basically, a, a vortex generator, well, when the air hits it, it causes it to swirl. So hopefully that swirling action keeps the air lower and kind of glued to the fuselage and keeps the air over the uh, vertical stabilizers. Um, because with the you know the large front end of the fuselage, you know when it really hits it, it kind of deflects all the air up. So just in theory, hopefully it works. Uh, it seems like it flew a little bit better when I did have it on. Um, also, the small vertical stabilizers on the wingtips, um, I added those on. Basically, they create a fence to help keep the rolling air of the KF airfoil kind of in line with the wing there, and it also creates a little bit of drag uh, at the rear of the plane, and that should help keep it more stable and flying straight. All right, we pretty much have the plane all together and the last step really of getting it set up, and you know, after you got all your controls set up for your, your delta mixing and stuff like that, is getting the proper CG of the plane. That's the center of gravity. Um, if you don't have the proper center of gravity of the plane, it won't fly right. You know, if you're tail heavy or nose heavy, it'll affect the way it flies. You know, if it's way off, it won't fly at all. Um, so basically what I did is I built a little you know, a battery tray. This isn't in the plans um, because I don't know what size battery you guys are going to using that or you can even just Velcro the battery straight down to the inside of the plane. Um, but anyway, I just made a little tray out of the scrap that was left over. This just holds a battery. Now I'm going to put this battery inside the plane and then I'll move it back and forward until I get the proper balance of the plane. The proper center of gravity, the plane should balance either 17 and a half inches, you know, back from the nose or you can also measure it, that roughly is, if you measure off the tip and follow the, the wing, it's basically 19 inches back on this edge. So I'm going to mark two marks. I don't know if you can see it. I have a real light and um, sharpie. i got to mark 19 inches back on each side. So I'm going to balance it on those two points, you know, and I'll move the battery back and forth until it gets to the proper balance. And then once I find that, I'll mark it, and then I'll just glue this battery tray in. Um, the battery tray, I like to use them because it puts a little bit of a, uh, you know, the sidewalls hope it'll hold the battery, you know, for a little bit of the uh, lateral movement. So let me get a balance and then pretty much that's it. All right, guys, my plane's all balanced now. The battery had to go pretty far forward into the nose. Um, and I also added about a half ounce of lead, um, but it's all balanced now and it's ready to go. So that pretty much finishes the build. All right, everyone, that pretty much completes this build for this new Foam Fighters 117 version 2. Um, it's a pretty cool plane. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it looks a lot more scale than the old version, and it does fly pretty good. So if you're interested in the plans, please check out our blog and plan store, and we'll see you again soon with RC Foam Fighters. Mm -hmm.